So we can also use a superconductor system to investigate another classical phenomena, that of simple harmonic motion. So I can take the superconductor, I can set it on the track, I can give it a little bit of momentum, and it'll oscillate back and forth. I'll give it a slightly larger amplitude. So there's a centripetal acceleration, which is leading to this oscillating in a circular pattern. As I increase the angle of this grid with respect to the table, we can see it changes the period and correspondingly frequency of this oscillation. Next, we'll do a quantitative comparison of this period as we change the angle by a known amount. So now let's consider the motion of the superconductor from the point of view of energy. Let's define our system to be that of the superconductor, the magnetic track, and the Earth. Once set in motion, let's consider the energy of the system. So we can neglect any air resistance in this case. And since we have no contact between the superconductor and the track, we have no frictional resistance. That means we can consider total mechanical energy in this system to be conserved. That's composed of both kinetic energy and potential energy. So let's consider what happens at the bottom when the speed of the superconductor is the greatest. In that case, we have the greatest motion, and that's reflected by the greatest value for the kinetic energy. As it rises above that point, the superconductor slows. That means there's a change in the kinetic energy of the system. What then happens to that change in kinetic energy? Is it converted to some other type of energy? So we know now there's an increase in potential energy, and that's what's happened to the kinetic energy that's being lost as the superconductor goes up. What is the source of that potential energy? So good, we now realize that the source of the potential energy is an increase in the gravitational potential energy. Now let's consider what happens as we go up to the peak on the other side, to the maximum displacement from its original starting point at the bottom. At the turning point between when the superconductor is going up and when it starts back down, there's a point where the speed has to be zero. That would necessarily mean that there's a significant change in the kinetic energy. So at this point, is the kinetic energy a minimum or a maximum? At the same point then, is the potential, gravitational potential energy, a minimum or a maximum? Now let's consider moving back down to the lowest point where we know the speed is greatest and ask the same questions. Is the kinetic energy at this point minimum or maximum for the system? And how does that affect the gravitational potential energy? Is that a minimum or a maximum? So this interconversion between kinetic and potential energy is what leads to the oscillations of this system, something to be described in more detail later.